Good day! Welcome to our webinar on Electrical and Electronic Engineering and Applied Computer Science programs at Saxon University of Applied Science. My name is Davide and I am a student assistant at the International Office. I am here today with uh, Edmund and welcome Edmund. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Edmund Schaefer. Uh, I've taught here at Saxon University of Applied Sciences for the past five years. Um, I teach in Electrical Engineering and the Applied Computer Sciences Department. Um, focusing primarily on subjects to do with renewable energy. Um, next to that, I'm also an advisor and coordinator for the Saxion Smart Solutions Semester, um, and I do research in the Chair of Sustainable Energy Systems. Thank you. So, what is going to be the structure for our webinar? We will first uh, um, yeah, get a bit deeper into the electrical and electronic engineering program, see what are the highlights of this curriculum, and then move to applied computer science, uh, then talk about internships and uh, uh, this smart solution semester, which is probably something you haven't heard of before. And then talk about the career opportunities. If you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to ask them in the live chat. So we will now start with the electrical and electronic engineer program. Um, the reason why I came this far to study is because uh, the tuition fees, first of all, uh, were affordable and also I wanted to get like a different cultural experience than back in my country. So I thought it was a great opportunity to both study in English and get to know another culture. Plus the education here is of a higher uh, level than in my country, so that was of a greater advantage. I think it's a really good idea to study abroad because you get to know a lot of international people, first of all. So you're not only surrounded by people from your own culture uh, who speak your own language, but you also get to know different cultures and different people coming from different places over the world. And you're all sharing the same uh, scenario, which is both studying in another country and overcoming like some uh, difficulties that that involves. So I think it's a great um, opportunity that everyone who has the chance to take should do. Here there's a lot more opportunities than back in my country. Uh, to begin with, uh, the government provides with uh, scholarships for people who cannot afford to pay their own tuition fee. Plus, if you're still, still struggling with uh, your money, you can also work and get a grant from the government. That helps a lot of people to come here to this country to study. Um, that's something that we as students appreciate a lot from uh, how this country works. Uh, other opportunities, for example, are you're in the middle of Europe and then you can travel uh, basically all over. Uh, also, transportation here within the country is uh, really affordable for students, so you can get to know many, many cities and do short trips, and uh, I think that's pretty good for us. For me to overcome the cultural difference was not uh, so difficult because I travel a lot uh, back, uh, back when I was like 16 to 18, I travel a lot uh, around the world I would say. But still it's a struggle to go to a country where you don't speak the language. Um, that's the main difficulty, also the weather and the, all the activities are different, also the culture of the people and their behavior is different. So I think you just have to approach people from this country and try to adapt to what they do, also see how, why they do it this way, right? And uh, I think that's a good way of uh, interacting with the culture and overcoming the difference between yours and theirs. Even when the studies are taking out of uh, my energy and then you should go to classes, prepare for your exams and also do your internship and final thesis, uh, my ultimate goal is to have my own company and work for myself. And I think that not only the studies and what you learn uh, prepare you for that, but also the fact that you do an internship and a thesis, which is like a final internship uh, in a company, allow you to see how the market works, right? So how companies work, how projects are done within a company, Plus, you also study with a lot of international people, so your, your network is quite broad. So that, that allows you to have like different options and different points of view about the different topic or uh, business, whatever you want to work in. The studies helped me to get to my final point, both by providing me uh, theoretical and practical work. So uh, on one side you have all the teachers in your school who can help you solve doubts, uh, gain more knowledge about something, or they can give you tips about how industries work so you can decide by yourself is it worth for me to go there or not. Uh, plus when you go to a company and you do an internship then you can really see how is it working there. right? So you can have an overview of how the industry where you want to work is before uh, going there and saying, okay, I, I will work like an engineer, then 
First you go and you say, okay, how is it working as an engineer? And then you see it by your own eyes. Electrical and electronic engineering. The first thing that comes to my mind is, is there a lot of math? <laughs> well, it's a question we get asked a lot. Um, dealing specifically with uh, electrical engineering, yes, math is involved. Um, I would say it is one of the main building blocks of our course. Um, the thing about it is, though, we don't really expect any prior knowledge from our students. Um, we get students coming from all over the world to follow this course, so it's harder for us to know 100% exactly um, what kinds of prior education, prior mathematics they will have. So our solution to the problem is, in the first year and then part of the second year, we basically start maths from more or less from scratch. Uh, and we only teach the maths that you specifically need for the course. So something like algebra is very important. Algebra will be one of the first maths courses you have. Um, but it's only going to be specifically linked to the, the elements that you will need to complete electrical engineering. Okay, cool, thank you. And so does, this, does it go the same way also for other subjects? So I don't need to have any prior experience for any of the subjects? Um, no, not really. Um, it's always good if you remember your high school physics, um, but we start pretty much everything from zero. Um, if you know a little bit about something like programming or you know a little bit about something like um, hardware, what a PCB is, maybe have the solder, that's okay. But we do start everything from the beginning. And also, when I think of engineering, it comes to my mind definitely a lot of theory. I come from Italy, and in Italy we have a very theoretical-based uh, academic <coughs> um, experience. So how is it here? Like, is there a lot of theory in the program? Well, um, it's kind of w one of the very nice things about studying in the Netherlands. The, the approach here is more from the practical side, and it's a university of applied sciences. So generally what will happen is in a quarter, or in a period of 10 weeks, mm -hmm. you'll have theoretical subjects, and next to those theoretical subjects, you'll also be dealing with practical problems. Um, so usually the practical problems in the first year start very base. It might be something like programming a, a coffee machine, for example. That's one project we traditionally That's did. nice. Yeah, that's very cool. Something like that, and then in order to complete the project with a group of people, so let's say somewhere between four and eight people, you have to uh, think about the theory that you're taking at the moment and the theory you've done in previous quarters and apply that to the specific situation. So it's kind of, it's very, very nice because you're not just uh, taking exams and then moving on to the next thing, you're really thinking about the application of the theory in real life situations. That you do constantly then uh, throughout the fourth year, right? right? Yeah, okay. That's really nice. And also, you have two specialization, right, in mm -hmm. the electrical and tonic engineering program. Yeah, so we have two specializations. Uh, they have abbreviations, which I won't go into now. Mm -hmm. But um, we have one that goes more in the power and automation direction. So think uh, renewable energy, sustainable energy. Think about um, uh, PLC automation, kind of automation of factories, things like that. It's so one direction. And the opposing direction, you look more towards microcontrollers, uh, embedded programming, embedded systems, and things like that. The way I usually like to think of them is if you have a scale going from hardware to software, uh, the power side, automation side, is more on the hardware side, and the embedded system side is moving towards that down that scale more towards the software. So you kind of get a balance of both. Um, in the um, in the energy side, we do focus more on the hardware, and the uh, embedded system side, and the uh, microcontroller side, it's kind of a 50-50 balance, I would say. OK, so if I'm more interested in the uh, hardware part, I should choose the energy part of the program. Correct. And uh, on the software part, then, uh, yeah, soft part, then uh, the, uh, the other part. Right? Correct. Uh, that would, the other that specialization. Would, yeah, that's generally okay. the way our students choose. Uh, one more point. I should also mention that specialization is from the second year. So you get um, an entire year to kind of yeah. uh, see what's going to kind of what your specialty is, what, what you like to do. And there are some certain key subjects that you can focus on. And if you like those subjects, you'll more uh, predisposed to like either the, the um, microcontroller side or the power side. 
And do I also get some recommendation? Because I can imagine that still like in the first year, you are a bit overwhelmed with so many different yeah. new subjects. Mm -hmm. And still maybe you cannot make up your mind and take the decision for your next years. Like, do I get some uh, inputs also, some support from teachers in the choosing part? Definitely. You can always ask the teacher from specific subjects um, what they think. Uh, every student that, that starts at uh, uh, electrical engineering gets a uh, spe specific mentor uh, that they will follow them through the four years. And this is something you can always discuss with them. And if they don't know the answer, then they'll always be able to point to the person who does. So um, it's a decision that you know we, we really do want to help our students make. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, we will now have a video uh, interview with uh, Marius, uh, an alumni of uh, the Electrical and Electronic Engineering program, and see what Marius has to tell you. Hi, my name is Marius Tanachel. I'm from Romania. I've studied electronics engineering at Saxion and I've graduated in 2014. Looking back at the time I had at Saxion, one of the most memorable experiences I had was uh, testing one water cannon. I had to build the electronics for the water cannon and basically you put water balls in this, in this big box and they launches them really up in the air and I had to figure out how to test it so I took it to the parking lot I think by today you have about 50 water bottles on the rooftop of Saxion. The most valuable thing I learned at Saxion was actually entrepreneurship. From an early stage, the teachers teach you how to think as a company. So all the projects we did were established with a secretary, there was a CEO, there was a CTO, everything was done in an entrepreneurial way. For the cost, I think it's quite easy to cover because of the Dutch labor market. I mean, we're now in Amsterdam and the prices are much higher than it was in Esfere to live, for example. I came from Romania where I already studied for two years, but I was looking for something more practical. And uh, Saxon offered just that. They, uh, you had your own toolbox, you had all kind of machinery you could use and all kind of equipment. And the teachers saw that you put that effort and they rewarded you for that. They gave you even more interesting things to do. So it was definitely worth the effort. So the curriculum that I studied um, was quite broad. Uh, you could have went into straight technical things, uh, then you would have been specialized, but you also had an overview. So I had a course in uh, business management, I had a course in uh, also economics. So you have also an overview and that really helps me in what I'm doing now. Is, uh, now I'm doing a consultancy for smart city applications and um, I can go really uh, technical and I can build prototypes and proof of concepts, which I did, and I can also have an overview and discuss with the client the bigger project. All right, so we have just seen like what the electrical and electronic engineering program is about, but then uh, applied computer science. Mm, is there again a lot of math, like for engineering? Because this this is something that scares a lot of students. Yes, it's one of, again one of the questions we get, and specifically from uh, applied computer science students or people who want to do that, perhaps. Um, yes, there is some math involved. The first year for electrical engineering and applied computer science are identical, with the exception of three subjects. Um, so there is still math involved, um, but the application of the math is slightly different. In electrical engineering, you, it's more of a math-based approach anyway. Uh, applied computer science, you have to have a knowledge of the math, but it's used less. So I would say I wouldn't let the math scare you off. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's very good. Um, and then um, can you tell us something uh, about the program uh, itself? Like, um, what is like the, the most important subject, for example, or like the core point of ACS? Well, I would say, um, when describing electrical engineering, we were talking about a scale going from hardware to software. And when you look at ACS, um, it's very much focused on the software side. So uh, electrical engineering is still more hardware based and applied computer science is way down the, the scale more towards the software side. They describe it as being software with a little bit of hardware. Um, the, the actual subjects, you do things like Java and, 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 and databases and things like that. Um, we have the advantage of working together with electrical engineering for the first year. Uh, as I said, all the subjects except for three are identical. What that basically means is um, if you're in doubt which one of the two you should choose, you can always switch from one to the other. Uh, students 
tend to do that. They find out all that um, they like programming, they like hardware more. So within the first year, uh, with no extra charge, and it usually doesn't cost you any extra time, um, you can switch from one to the other. Um, and I would say, like, uh, we see sometimes students who want to focus more on the software side don't find that they have enough of that in electrical engineering and make that decision. Yeah, and then you mentioned Java, actually. <coughs> so um, uh, do students require a previous knowledge of uh, programming language? Or mm. do you start from the scratch as it is for the math? Um, we start from scratch, generally. Okay. Um, we tend to notice students coming with some prior knowledge, but it's definitely not needed. Um, but I would say if you're looking to start this course and you kind of want to know about programming, my advice is always uh, download a tutorial, make a hello world, and see for yourself before coming. <laughs> Yeah, I did an LA word as well myself. Yeah. Some time ago, it was in uh, C++, I C++, think. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, good. And then, uh, uh, is it also very practical, very practical uh, subject? Well, uh, it's along the same lines as electrical engineering. So you, you have the, the practical side, uh, the theoretical side, and then the practical side, um, and also the, the projects themselves. Um, you'll be working in labs as well, so exactly like electrical engineering. You'll be doing some work in, in the laboratories. Um, you have your own laptop, so um, it's not just the theory itself, it's also the practical um, implementation of that theory. Okay, and so, yeah, as we said, it's from the same, uh, it's, the, it's the program from the same academy, mm -hmm. and so, um, um, do you want to say anything else about the differences uh, between the two programs? Or do you think you would say just with uh, like hardware, if you're more f interested in the hardware part and electrical and electronic engineering, right? And then the software part is uh, applied computer science. I would say that. Uh, I would also say it's kind of one of uh, our main advantages is the fact that we do it this way. We're the only college in the country that uh, offers applied computer science in the same department as electrical engineering. So one of our advantages is that we have a lot more um, hardware knowledge. So what does that mean? Um, if you're looking more towards um, maybe programming front ends, uh, things like uh, web design, things like that, you should definitely be looking at software engineering. But if you're looking at more of a microcontroller practical approach to, to kind of programming for directly to hardware, uh, I would definitely say you should be looking at applied computer science instead. Okay. Yeah, I think this is really clear. And if you also have uh, like more specific questions, you can just ask them in the chat. Um, okay, so then we now move to uh, the third and uh, fourth year, uh, where you can choose for your smart solution semester or have your internship uh, and then write your thesis uh, and do your minor. <laughs> My name is Harvey Pritzela, I'm Professor of International World Technology at Sachsen University of Applied Science and I am representing the customer of this project. The assignment uh, was derived from a larger project called Green Source and Green Source is a uh, project lasting almost for six years in total. It's supported by the Dutch uh, government of foreign affairs, including companies from, uh, from the Netherlands and also counterparts in South Africa. The, the role to support the company is that they have to supply the components. In fact, Green Source is a concept. It's a concept of uh, harvesting rainwater by means of collecting it under uh, artificial pitch, uh, by means of some kind of grades, and that water is being filtered by a membrane system and then offered to uh, primary and secondary schools as drinking water. So in fact what we are doing is combining uh, safe drinking water with sport. So the subtitle of Green Source is also Sports for Water. I'm Michael Kortman. I'm studying chemical engineering and uh, we worked on this project uh, the last uh, 20 weeks. I am Nick Kroep. I'm from Haagsbergen and uh, my previous study was mechanical engineer but in a lower level than I'm doing now. I don't know if it really was really technical. I was more the yeah, social uh, guy in uh, the group, I think. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Supreet Sudhama. I'm from India. Go abroad for the studies. For example, Erasmus or European Project Semester, it would help you a lot because you are going to share your ideas, you are going to share all your cultures, you are going to speak a lot of things, you are going to meet a lot of people and you are going to socialize yourself. That makes you open up yourself 
so that i feel that it's a very good job hello my name is luis perez martinez i'm from cartagena spain and i study now telecommunication engineer in a specialty of telematics so my background is more informatic with telecommunication my role in the project is head of mon the monitoring part because our project is a filter, a filter water, a filter water system. So it was very important to see in, in real time if the systems work properly. At what are the value? It is about the water, rainwater harvesting. So in the South Africa, it has been already installed right now. All around four to five, it has been installed. And now this is uh, about the pitch. So we have the soccer pitch over here. And yeah, it's about when it rains. Under this soccer pitch, the, all the dirty water is going to be stored and all the dirty water is going to be pumped to the filtration system over here and then it is going to bring our, uh, provide a good water to drink. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Right, so we have just seen like how the first and the second years uh, look like, but how about the third and the fourth? Which type of uh, subjects or projects or just activities can I expect? Well, in the third and the fourth year, you don't have any or very many traditional subjects anymore. Uh, those are all in the first and the second year. Uh, the third and the fourth year are built from four different uh, categories. You have a section smart solution semester, a minor, an internship, and then a graduation internship. Okay, I've never heard like of many of them as a prospective student, um, but so I'm really curious, what is the Smart Solutions Semester actually about? Well, the Saxion Smart Solutions Semester is, is relatively unique in, in the country. We're the only University of Applied Sciences that does it. Um, we have projects that come from either our research institutes here at Saxion, or they come from companies in and around the region. Um, projects that are inter or multidisciplinary by design, uh, meaning you can't solve them as just an electrical engineer or just as a, a programmer. Um, so we have groups of students, four to eight students, that work together full time uh, for six months uh, and they try and um, come up with solutions to these pro uh, problems and actually uh, design or develop something. Um, the interesting thing is because they're multidisciplinary, you have to work together with people from different academies. So as an example, one of the projects uh, I had last year, we had students from electrical engineering, applied computer sciences, um, industrial product design, um, small business, uh, fashion and textile was also a part of it. Oh, even. It's a strange combination. It's a strange it? combination. <laughs> but you'd be amazed how many combinations there are, especially being an electrical engineer or a programmer. Um, you're kind of the backbone of a lot of different types of projects that almost happen in other spaces. Um, so it's a, something really interesting that we can offer our students, learning how to work in these multidisciplinary environments, which is really crucial, especially going forward and going onto the job market in years to come. Yeah, exactly. That's also what I, were, I wanted to say, because you, you prepare the students to work with uh, people with a different background. Mm -hmm. So also to understand the differences and how they can uh, complement each other when working on a, the same project, right? Yes. Um, learning about what other people can do, um, what they can offer you, and what also the idea of being able to explain what you can offer someone else that it's very very crucial uh, skill that you will need later on yeah awesome and then uh, talking about like orientation to the job market we have uh, the internship mm -hmm. and uh, what can students do for the internship like does Saxion give them the company or can they are they free to choose their own company they like well um, for the internship itself we keep it relatively um, open so we want students and are actively promoting students to go into companies. Um, I myself get lots of invites from companies and lots of assignments from companies. I pass these along to students. It's a responsibility of the student themselves to find an internship, but we do help with that. Um, they can choose companies in the Netherlands, in the region. Many of our students go abroad, so they go to places like Vietnam and China. Um, on top of that, uh, if they don't necessarily want to do one in, in a company, they can also choose to do one 
in one of our research institutes here at Saxion. So doing maybe something uh, with a subject that they're really passionate about. Maybe they did a project for the Saxion Smart Solutions semester, and then they think, oh, well, I'd like to continue with that. I'm going to do an internship for the same chair or for the same company. There is something that really caught my attention. You said that you receive a lot of assignments from companies. Mm -hmm. uh, does it actually mean that uh, companies really value the quality of the education of the programs? Yes, definitely. Um, we have way more assignments than students generally. Um, it can be sometimes tricky for students coming from abroad to find something. If companies prefer Deutsch speakers, that's a point as well. But on the whole, we find a lot of companies are uh, really, really willing to, to open um, themselves up to international students. Um, it also kind of helps that we're very flexible with the, the third and fourth year. So we don't say you have to do this in a specific order. The only thing we say is that graduation has to be at the end. Um, and even now, there are a couple of exceptions to do with the minors. Any other, anything else within the third and fourth year, you can basically decide when you do what. So if you find that internship, but it doesn't start until September and it's February now, maybe you decide to do a minor right now. Or maybe the Smart Solutions semester um, projects we're offering, maybe there's not that one that you'd like, but you do see the minor that's starting in a, a, another college that starts right now, you're more than free to do that as well. Great, and then you mentioned the minor, but um, how does the minor actually support the um, development of the knowledge of the student? Like, uh, is it a boost also for the internship and then the future uh, career of the, our students? Well, that's a good question. Um, something that we, we look at as well as we want to make this a personalized course, which is why we give so much freedom in the third and fourth year. But another thing we offer is the idea of a minor that can be filled in with more or less anything you want to do. Um, there are some boundaries, of course, but um, you can look at it from one of two perspectives. You could either look at it from trying to broaden your base of knowledge, so maybe do something that you wouldn't do with an electrical engineering, maybe with mechatronics, maybe go towards small business. We have a lot of students who want to become entrepreneurs, who want to start their own companies, so they go and do a minor to do with small businesses or starting their own companies. That's one way of looking at it, trying to broaden your base of knowledge. The other way you could look at it is to deepen your base of knowledge. So let's say you really like control engineering or you really like programming in a specific language. Yeah. Uh, you could choose to do robotics and mechatronics, which is a lot more in-depth and detailed than you would get in our general, the first two years of our course. Yeah, thank you. And then it ends with the graduation, right? Mm -hmm. So students have to write a thesis that I guess everything is practical here it will also be practical oriented, right? It's uh, not just theoretical. Well, yes and no. Um, okay. Students are free to choose what mm -hmm. types of graduation assignments they want to do. So we see kind of this uh, broad scale again of um, more of a design concept, a design realization, so actually building something um, or doing steps in a design realization, so maybe just the design and not actually the implementation. And on the other side, we see um, students going more towards applied research. So trying to do more background research into if a concept is even feasible. Yeah. Um, and then you have everything in between. So generally, for all of our graduate uh, assignments, you see those two components. And you're kind of free to choose whatever uh, assignment puts the emphasis on the component you like the most. So if you're more into design, you can do design more. If you're more into actual base research, maybe you have the ambition to go and do a master's degree later on, uh, you could focus more on the research side. Nice. So there is some quite some flexibility in the graduation assignment. Okay, great. Thank you. And now I think it's time for us to see what are the career opportunities afterwards. All right. So after your graduation, you have this beautiful piece of paper, very important, your Bachelor of Science, right? Mm -hmm. So what? can you do afterwards? You can maybe choose to continue with uh, another study program or you can start your career right away. How about a master? Like, can students go right away into a master program? Um, well, they can do master's degrees afterwards. Uh, the only thing is, if you're gonna go to a traditional university for a master's degree after being here, you have to do an extra six months, uh, what they call a, a change program. Um, the good thing about the program though is especially if you were going to go to the University of Twente, so the local uh, theoretical university we have here, you can do that six months as part of your minor. So instead of doing the minor um, as we just described, you could decide to take this change 
a program instead and then directly after your bachelor's start with a master's degree and there are a wide variety of master's degrees that you could do we have students that decide to continue with electrical engineering or embedded systems or computer science we have students that want to go more towards the the management side um, maybe more towards a specific element like sustainable energy um, and you can do that here you could do that at other universities uh, across the country or abroad Right, and what if instead, like after four years of studying, uh, still a very practical uh, approach to my studies, I really cannot wait to put my knowledge into practice mm -hmm. and apply it in the workplace. Uh, can I go straight away into and start my career actually? Like, is what I study at Saxon enough to have a good job? Most definitely. Um, the thing about electrical engineering and applied computer science is uh, it's a very broad um, topic, the very broad topics in general. Meaning, usually when you go to a company, a lot of companies will have training ships for, for six months, a year, two years. Um, and then it's the time where you're really f going to start focusing on a certain subject. We give you the foundation and, and the kind of the, yeah, the foundation, the, the overall idea of what electrical engineering or applied computer science looks like. Uh, and then you have to kind of pick out the specific parts you want to use when you go into a job. And we see that our students are in very, very high demand, especially in the region and in the country. Um, like an, anecdot an anecdotal story I have, uh, last year, so in June, I had 12 graduate students. Ten of the students had been hired by the company before they finished the graduation. Oh my god, that's incredible. And, and, and this is, it's not an exception. Um, we see it's a, sometimes a little bit tougher for international students to get into this position, especially if they want to stay in country, but definitely not impossible. And especially if you're willing to maybe learn a bit of Dutch, um, you're going to work in a more international company. Maybe you're going to work for an international company and they'll find you a job in the country that you come from. We had a student who was from China. Uh, he worked for Philips and then he eventually was offered a job oh. for Philips Shanghai. Mm -hmm. um, things like that occur quite often. Our students are so in demand and there is such a, uh, a lack of engineers right now that it's really um, a good marketplace when you first get into the marketplace. And you, then you also have big names because Philips is not like a very small company so you can I do a good career and uh, develop yourself further. Do you also have other examples of company because maybe our uh, prospective students are really curious to know like start dreaming yeah. right now, right? Well we have, um, we have definitely have Philips. Uh, I myself worked at Siemens and I know students who have worked at Siemens. Uh, we have a Siemens division not too far from here. Um, also companies like maybe slightly less known but also as big a company like Eaton. Eaton mm -hmm. is a, a multinational company that makes certain hardware solutions um, focused on the energy grid and they hired two of my students about halfway through their graduation uh, and I have two other students now and I fully expect them to be offered jobs. Um, then you have the bigger companies as well you have uh, again ASML for example in Eindhoven. ASML is the biggest chip producer in the world I believe the f biggest or the second biggest um, but then you also have a lot of small companies and startups we kind of have a good startup culture in this region so then you're also going to look at have smaller companies be able to take those opportunities as well or maybe even start your own company wow. that's wonderful so whether you are looking to start already your career or like you still want to continue with a master with the uh, electrical and electronic engineer program and applied computer science like you will always do a good choice right definitely great and so um, now we have um, a short video for you uh, with uh, some uh, tips uh, for international students my name is Avgenion Mercia I am an associate professor of unmanned robotic systems at the research group of mechatronics here at uh, Saxion University of uh, Applied Sciences. My specialization is on uh, aerial robots, which people actually commonly in, uh, uh, know them as drones. One of the things that actually distinguishes from uh, scientific universities uh, are the research and also the educations that we uh, give here are more applied uh, oriented. So it's not really fundamental research or fundamental theoretical uh, education, more on 
the applied. So basically our role here at uh, the University of Applied Sciences is actually to bridge the gap between the scientific universities and the industries. So basically we are the technology innovators, technology developers. So uh, you get a lot of possibilities here at Saxion University of Applied Sciences in order to not only learn the abstract uh, part, but also to actually uh, develop new things, uh, even have a good feeling about the existing systems uh, using all the components that are actually available. It's not only theoretical, but it's more a combination of a theory uh, with a practice. For example, the things that you actually see here, where one of the research lines that we have at the research group of mechatronics is uh, unmanned robotic systems, which I am the associate professor for. Uh, it, and it covers the unmanned robotic system, covers the unmanned aerial robots, which are commonly known as drones, uh, ground robots, and even uh, including underwater robots. In most of the uh, projects that we do together with companies, together with other international partners, be it in uh, European projects or national projects or regional projects that we actually collaborate with industries, regional industries or national, or maybe even uh, European-wide uh, industries, we involve students. And students are actually involved in every of the activities, the applied research activities that we actually carry out. And students, th this is uh, a, an innovative uh, recharging uh, station for aerial robots. Uh, it is really uh, new and innovative, uh, which actually enables to use aerial robots 24-7 by being able to recharge it. And this is uh, what has been also developed not only by researchers that we have, but researchers and uh, uh, lecturers uh, together with students. And the students get the possibility to actually work on real innovative activities. Uh, it's really important to uh, emphasize here that the students actually get also the opportunity to work closely with companies. So that at the early stage, they get the experience the working ethics and also the professionalism that they actually are supposed to have when they join industries. That's actually the unique thing that we provide here at Saxion, the unique opportunity compared to other uh, institutions. All right, thank you, Abiji. And do you have any tips or anything you would like to add, Edmund? Um, well, I think I have two things. Um, I always get the question, sh should I do this course? And I always ask people like, well, does it look interesting to you to be an engineer? Um, the world is really in need of engineers right now. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And to be honest, if I'm really honest, I don't even really care what type of engineer you want to be. Just be an engineer. But the thing about it is you really have to kind of like engineering. Um, so it should at least look in a passing fashion interesting to you. If, if you don't have enough knowledge about what these both these courses are so far, that's fine. You'll find out when you start. But I would say as a tip, only do this if you do have a passing interest in engineering. But please then, if you do think you want to be an engineer, really do engineering. Um, my second tip is uh, one that I always say during our open days. One of the biggest mistakes our students make is the idea that they're going to start their career when they get their diploma and walk out the door. It's actually not the case. You start your career the minute you walk inside these doors. Uh, when you walk in the building, you're going to meet teachers who have a long list of people that they know in companies, they have a lot of knowledge, you're going to meet people who you're going to run into for years to come. Like I still run into my old classmates from college, I graduated a few years ago, uh, a lot of people hung around, some people I run into at conferences, you kind of run into the same people. You're starting to build a reputation now and build kind of a network and you're starting to, to really think about what you're going to do for the rest of your life. So. Please don't make the, um, the mistake of thinking your career is going to start when you're done. It really, really starts when you walk in the building. Wonderful. Yeah. I can really feel your passion for engineering and also for teaching. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, so, um, you've had a chance to uh, submit your questions via the live chat, but if you want to submit your questions directly to students, we have a dedicated platform. It's called Intusaxion. You can find it on intosaxion.nl, the link is below the video. And uh, also you have the chance to send us questions related to admission, housing, insurance via social media. You can use Facebook or Instagram, whatever you prefer. And still you find the link here. 
thank you very much and thank you Admund for being here with us thank you for and uh, we really wish to welcoming you soon at Saxion and the best of luck with your current study and the start of your future career thank you have a good day you're thinking about studying at Saxion that leads to a lot of questions who could help you find answers better than our current students On Intrusaxion, you can ask your questions to more than 250 Zaxion students. Intrusaxion is an independent platform. Our ambassadors will give you a genuine answer to your questions. So are you still unsure about your study choice or do you have questions about one of our programs? Visit intersaxion.com.